Greetings and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. Podcast episodes are available on VHSA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, and many others. We're a member of the Public Health Podcast Network, the Virginia Audio Collective, and the Family Podcast Network. Podcast episodes also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 8.20 a.m. across Central Virginia, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Please send questions, comments, feedback, or guest suggestions to PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. Again, that's PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. Com. Our guest today is Holly Mortlock, the Deputy Director of External Affairs and Policy with the Virginia Health Benefits Exchange at the Virginia State Corporation Commission. She joins us for a conversation about the work of the SEC, Virginia's relatively new insurance marketplace, the recently concluded open enrollment period, and more. So welcome to the show. Holly, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Julian. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we appreciate you being with us. Let's just start to learn a little bit more about you. From what I gather, earlier in your career, you were a social studies teacher both in Hawaii and in Washington State before transitioning to policy analysis work in the Washington legislature and state government out there. Since coming to Virginia about 10 years ago, you've worked as a policy director at the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services. You were a senior health policy advisor to former Governor Ralph Northam, and for the past few years, you've worked with the SEC. Beyond those few professional highlights, what are some essential things about yourself that people should know? Well, that's a great question. So uh, so I guess what I would say is that what's really driven my career so far is just a passion for healthcare and for wellness and just the recognition, you know, uh, that, you know, how important healthcare is to individuals and families and to be able to thrive and have a healthy life. Well, that certainly is important. Uh, wellness is very critical to quality of life, as we all know. Holly, you join us today to talk about Virginia's insurance marketplace for consumers, which we will discuss in just a moment. Before that, as a baseline, let's just chat briefly about the State Corporation Commission, which has oversight for the insurance marketplace, as we mentioned. The SCC, as it's known, is a state agency with regulatory authority over many businesses and economic interests in Virginia. This includes utilities like power companies, financial institutions such as certain banks and credit unions, insurance companies, railroad and utility safety, and more. The SCC is also the agency that handles those business and corporate registrations. So if you would, tell us a bit about the work of the SEC and how it relates to the lives of Virginians. Sure. So you did a great summary of all of the entities that the SEC regulates and oversees. So really the role that the SEC plays across Virginia um, is to you know, balance the interests of industry and of consumers and make sure that they are providing you know, the utmost consumer services you know, to individuals who are impacted by those industries. And we did mention the health insurance marketplace, and that is the purpose of our conversation to that. So let's turn to that now. We're recording this in January, and just a few days ago on January 15th, the annual open enrollment period for people to shop and sign up for health coverage on Virginia's insurance marketplace concluded. To give listeners a little background, these insurance marketplaces came about as a result of the Federal Affordable Care Act of 2010, and they are essentially a digital venue for people who don't have health insurance coverage through their employer and don't qualify for things like Medicaid or Medicare to shop for insurance. Under ACA, states had the option to establish a state-based exchange or to default to the federal exchange, which is healthcare.gov. Initially, Virginia relied on the federal exchange, but in recent years has taken steps to establish its own exchange with support from many stakeholders, including the hospital community. So with that background, what can you tell us about the process of setting up the state-based exchange and the transition to that platform? Yeah, absolutely. So Virginia decided to take the step in 2020. The Virginia General Assembly created the Health Benefit Exchange and really with the desire to improve access to affordable quality coverage across Virginia. And we really wanted to build a marketplace that is by Virginia for Virginians. And it allows us to build better relationships with other stakeholders and agencies to provide an improved consumer experience. So one of the things that we did uh, when we first started out was we listened to all of the states that um, had made that transition from the SSM to their own state-based marketplace and got a great sense of of what worked really well for them, uh, what didn't work so well for them, and tried to apply all of those lessons learned to our transition. So we really were thoughtful and took our time um, and tried to make the smoothest transition possible. This really allows us to coordinate our health insurance affordability programs with the Department of Medical Assistance Services and other state agencies and stakeholders, and that helps us to promote the continuity of health insurance coverage. 
for example, if someone loses coverage from their job or is looking to make a professional transition to the gig economy or is found ineligible for Medicaid, as is really applicable this year, we have closer connections with our state agencies and our agent and assister programs to help individuals make those successful transitions. And you just mentioned Medicaid and the transition out of that. Our listeners should know that essentially during the COVID-19 pandemic, there were rules put in place for continuous coverage or continuous enrollment in Medicaid, even if people had a life status change. With the end of the public health emergency in May of last year, that continuous enrollment sunset or wound down. And so many states like Virginia are going through the process of Medicaid redetermination to essentially determine whether or not people enrolled should remain on that program based on the income eligibility guidelines or if they should transition to a different program. Since you referenced that, Holly, I wonder if you could talk about how the redetermination process has played out or what what implications you've seen as it relates to this most recent open enrollment period. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the one of the real advantages of making the transition from the federal marketplace to our own state-based exchange is that we have so much more data available about our consumers that helps us promote that continuity of coverage. So for example, if someone is losing Medicaid coverage or they're found ineligible for Medicaid, whether it's from the redetermination process or just a new application, we have coordinated our processes and operations with the Medicaid system so that we will get an account transfer from someone who um, has been found ineligible for Medicaid and be able to conduct direct outreach to that person to try to help support them getting into coverage. You know, traditionally, there has been a low uptake of individuals who have lost Medicaid and tried to find um, coverage on the federal marketplace, but we are hoping to improve that process here in Virginia with those close connections that we have with our state agency partners and our other stakeholders. Well, sounds like there's a good system in place already to make that happen, which is encouraging to hear. Listeners should know that marketplace.virginia.gov is the address for Virginia State-Based Exchange. And again, in simple terms, people who visit that site can shop for a variety of health insurance options. They can compare plans and purchase affordable, high-quality health insurance coverage. As I understand it, all plans cover essential medical services such as doctor visits, emergency room visits, prescriptions, mental health care, hospitalization, and pregnancy and childbirth services. The Marketplace also has resources that can help small businesses provide affordable health and dental coverage, and many individuals who shop for coverage may also be eligible for financial assistance. So this really is kind of a one-stop shop portal. I think some questions that people listening to this might have are, who is eligible to shop for coverage at marketplace.virginia.gov, and how do they know if they qualify for any financial assistance? Can you field those for people who may have those questions? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so anyone who does not currently have insurance through their employer or does not have an offer of affordable coverage from their employer is eligible to purchase coverage on the marketplace. Anyone who is unemployed, anyone who is experiencing a coverage transition, perhaps they've lost Medicaid or been found ineligible for Medicaid, they may be eligible to purchase coverage on marketplace.virginia.gov. We have a number of tools to help individuals determine what cost savings they may be able to get. So there we do have a cost savings calculator that gives people just a rough estimate before they have to go and complete a full application of what they may qualify for. We also have robust tools for finding um, a local assister or an agent in their community um, if they have additional questions or need support in figuring out how many cost savings they qualify for and what coverage would be best for them. And according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, more than 20 million people nationwide used either the federal or a state-based exchange to get coverage during the most recent open enrollment period. In Virginia, and again, this is according to CMS figures, more than 391,000 people signed up for coverage through marketplace.virginia.gov. With this most recent open enrollment period closed for Virginia state-based exchange, how did things go and what lessons have been learned for the next go-round? Yeah, that's a great question. And just to circle back to the previous point, more than nine out of 10 consumers that are shopping on Virginia's marketplace have qualified for financial savings. So that definitely has contributed to the increased numbers of enrollment on our exchange. We're really proud that 
when we get the final numbers in for this open enrollment, we expect that there will have been a 10 to 15 percent increase in enrollment from 2023. So we're just really excited that we've been able to get our message out um, and encourage people to come to our website and shop and to work with some of the agents and assisters available to help them in Virginia. We've certified over 3,500 agents and assisters to support people throughout the Commonwealth uh, in every community to help them find coverage. Well, that's good to have that that support personnel in place around the Commonwealth. So it sounds like you guys have done a lot of good work to really establish a strong foundation to grow this program, which is good news. We have talked a lot about the open enrollment period, which again ran from November of 2023 through January 15th of 2024. Outside of open enrollment, I know there are some other circumstances or events that may qualify people to sign up on marketplace.virginia.gov for coverage. What are other periods on the calendar or other life circumstances that would make folks eligible to use the platform outside of the normal open enrollment period? While open enrollment for 2024 has ended, individuals who've experienced a life change, such as we've talked about sort of having a loss of Medicaid coverage, a change in employment, getting married, having a baby, or moving, Virginia's insurance marketplace is here for them. We do have a robust list of what we call qualifying life events, which would open up for them um, a special enrollment period. We do have those lists available on our website, and individuals can also work with an agent or an assistor to help them determine if they qualify for one of those. This year, we are offering a special enrollment period for individuals who have lost Medicaid due to the unwinding. So anyone who's lost coverage, their Medicaid coverage between March 31st of 2023 and July 31st of 2024 can come to the marketplace and attest to the loss of Medicaid, and they will have 90 days to choose a health plan from the date that they attest on their loss of coverage. And their coverage would then start the first day of the month following that plan selection. So that will really help support individuals maintaining that continuity of coverage. And I would just say to individuals, if they do need health insurance coverage and they're not sure if they have a qualifying life event, would really encourage them to come to our website, marketplace.virginia.gov, check out qualifying life events, or to work with a certified insurance agent, a sister or navigator in their community to address questions they have about their coverage options. They can also call our Consumer Assistance Center at 888-687-1501. Well, that's great information, Holly. And again, that web address is marketplace.virginia.gov for anybody that wants to explore their coverage options. Before we wrap things up, Holly, we do have a tradition here on the podcast to ask our guests a pair of fun sort of personal questions to close things out. To keep things interesting, we have a list of 10 mystery questions that you can choose from by selecting two numbers between one and 10. And then I'll ask you the corresponding questions. So if you would, two numbers, please. Three and seven. Okay. Three is, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received and why does it stick with you? That is a really wonderful question. I'm going to take just a minute to think about that. Sure thing. The best piece of advice that I have ever received in my career is to always maintain your relationships. Always work to be open-minded, to listen and learn from what people have to say, and really try to incorporate their feedback into the work that you do, and really try to be open and respectful of everyone's point of view, and really work to see how other people how they perceive situations and the life experiences that they bring to their opinions about the work that they do. That's great advice. As they say, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So good advice there. And then number seven, if you could choose any one superpower to have or any one skill to instantly master, what would it be and why? So I think if I could have a superpower, I would like to be able to see the future. So as a person who is really invested in policymaking and wanting to see the best outcomes for all Virginians, for all the people that I've worked with over the course of my career, and I'm sure you know that policymaking is never done. We make policies and we do it with the best of intentions and and hoping for the best outcomes. But if I could have a superpower, I would like to be able to see the future so that I could make sure that we are making the absolute best decisions and accounting for every possible situation as we roll out whatever program it is that we're working on. 
Well, the gift of foresight would be a nice thing to have. And as you point out, absolutely, in the policymaking process, anytime you draw the line one place, there's always going to be someone just on the other side of that line who is a seemingly eligible beneficiary of a particular policy solution. And because of the way the language is written, it may not capture uh, someone just on the other side of that line. So these things, as you said, are often evolving and can be refined over time. So good perspective there. And with that, we have come to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so that you know when new episodes are available. We want to once again thank our guest, Holly Mortlock, for joining us today. So thank you. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed our conversation.